So this is scaling Node.js and unblocking the band loop. This is the first time I'm giving this talk. And this is my tag, if you want to check it. Uh, so first, let me start by a meme story, uh, just after lunch. So it was October 2015. I was working, hard working, with Java on my university some Python uh, at work, and some PHP for web development, which, eh, it was OK, but I wasn't having much fun. And one day, I stumbled WebTorrent. So WebTorrent is a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, BitTorrent uh, type of library for the websites. And I was completely astonished. It was, <laughs> what, you can do this in the web nowadays? It was amazing. For I was completely blown away. I loved it. And so I was like, whoa, I need to know what this is. I will find you and I will learn you. I had to know. So what is it composed with? I, I wonder. It's like there's this thing called Node.js. It's, oh, nice. It's, it uses JavaScript. And I already know JavaScript. This is amazing. What else is there? There's WebRDC, which allows the peer-to-peer -peer communication from browser to browser. It had this registry of modules available, and there were already a ton of them. But now this is like over 900,000. It's crazy. And this little thing called Browserify, which allowed to port those modules to the web. It's like, oh my god, this is amazing. This is so neat, this ecosystem, it, I'm amazing. And I was converted. It's like, <laughs> fully converted. It's like, I need to be there. <laughs> Thank you. It's like, uh -uh, don't give me none of that. <laughs> give me some of this, please. I had to learn it, and I started learning. But so many things. There's Oh, this, yeah. so there's classes, prototypes, event meters, events, streams, callbacks, set immediate. It doesn't work the same as uh, next week. Uh, it, 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 they are like backwards in Node.js. There's promises, ES6, Node 6 came out after Node 4 when I joined. Uh, set timeout, a async AWID in Node 7. And there was just too much of this. and well, I had to learn it all. I enjoyed it, but it was kind of too much. Uh, so it took me a lot of time to like get the grasp of it and just really feel confident working in Node.js to do something productive and uh, use it in production every day. Uh, but we want to get all of this, and I wanted to come back to the early stages of when I first saw WebTor and I was astonished, which, which for me was like, it was magic. So I had to get back and I want more, more of this magic to be available to everyone else. So that's for the meme story. So who am I? I'm a 24-year-old Colombian who took a long trip to talk uh, for the second time in his life uh, to Italy, which I hadn't come, and it's amazing, I love it. Uh, I'm a backend engineer at Apply, uh, which doesn't match the description, uh, because I was previously in, in Alambria, but I switched uh, two weeks ago. I advocate so much for open source Node.js and JavaScript because it changed my life, literally. It gave me better opportunities, it taught me a lot, of web development, infrastructure, cloud, all of this, which uh, sadly it wasn't given in my university as much as I would like. And finally, I do some research as part of my master's uh, degree at Uniandes and the Software Design Lab. 
so the talk. Scaling Node.js and unblocking the event. And keep in mind that this is all applicable in part to uh, front-end development with JavaScript. So Node.js is amazing. You don't have to keep all of the structure of, the, of your app in your mind. It's just If you want to read a file, just give me the file when it's available. It's a callback. It's event-driven. Uh, it's easy. Then you have, wait, did I show that? Yes. And if you want to create a server, you don't need all of this boilerplate, and you don't need to set up your project. Just if you have Node.js and you have this snippet of code, it will answer. Uh, it's asynchronous. Uh, each client gets replied by hello world super fast, super easy. And you just have to listen uh, in a port, and it's already running. It's super, super magical for me. But there's always a but. So if you want to work with Node.js at the scale in a single process, Node.js has the same as uh, JavaScript, which is it's a single thread. So you don't want to block it. So how do you scale it? And there's many ways to scale it. One is from the outside, from the infrastructure point of view. And we're going to go through it super quickly. Uh, so do you need some load balancing? Well, I'll give you some load balancing. If you have three or more Node.js processes, you can just hook it up to Nginx. And voila, you have four Node.js process of your app running behind the uh, reverse proxy, and it works. You can also use hat proxy, or you can even use the cluster module of PM2, which will do the clusterizing uh, like magic. And for load balancing, there's two approaches. So you can run as many processes as you want on your own, um, and then proxy to those ports by Nginx which will give you some advantages, uh, such as being able to change the strategy from round robin to whatever you want. So it will actually be better. HapProxy allows some configuration of one connection per process, and it will be more effective as not all the requests take the same time, and keeping in mind that Node.js is a single thread. Yeah, multiple process. And the second approach is to run a cluster of Node.js processes in the same port. This can be done by the cluster uh, module. So you can just launch cluster workers in the same port or use PM2. And the next approach, which is like the easy way to go, is serverless. Serverless now, is al and now allows to just launch Node.js processes and kill them when the request is done. And that, that's perfect. It's infinite, infinite, infinite scalable. It's great. And I, I do believe it's the future. We have the serverless library. We have Google Cloud Functions. We have uh, Seed Now, Lambda, Cloudflare Workers, and Azure. And I, I'm sure there's more. I'm just mentioning these because it's what I know. But now let's get on the Node.js part. So from the inside, how do you scale it? And that's pretty simple. You want to not block the event loop at all. There's even a, a guide from Node.js Foundation and just don't do it. So but what is the event loop? So the event loop, and I'm quoting, is what allows Node.js to perform non-blocking I.O. operations, despite the fact that JavaScript, JavaScript itself is single-threaded, by uh, offloading operations to the system kernel whenever possible, wherever possible. So let's uh, run this through on the phases. So the first phase is where set timeouts and set intervals are executed. Then we have the pending callbacks, which are deferred from the previous uh, phase. Uh, this is internal. We can ignore it. Uh, the check phase runs the setting mediates callbacks. 
Close callbacks such as socket on close when socket are destroyed or there, there was a timeout or whatever, those are run here. And everything else runs in the poll phase. So if there's a connection incoming, uh, it will happen here. You have to, that's where your app uh, responds and all, all of it. But how can we tell it? How can we tell when the band loop is blocked? There's a module for that. And it's called block that. So block that uh, uses async hooks. It's available. For, it's available from Node 8 uh, and upwards. And it's pretty easy to to work with. So you just require it, and then you tell it when it's blocked. Let me know when it's blocked. And all of you should do it at least when you're uh, developing your app to know when you are blocking the band loop and when those requests that are incoming are not getting processed all day. If you block the band loop, not even the connection will arrive to your app, and you won't get no errors from that. So let me show you an example. But first, let me show you what I'm actually running. So we have a script that uh, requires block that. We are requiring a blocking function which waits five seconds uh, with a while loop. And we're, um, we want block to let us know when we're blocking the band loop. And we set an interval of just highs every second. And then we run the blocking function in the three second mark. So what is going to happen? And it's blocked. In that time, no requests are being processed. Nothing is happening. And then you get this stack trace of where the blockage happened. And then we're back at responding. Back to our presentation. Uh, so how not to block it? How do we prevent these blocks of the band loop? So there's two roads, pretty much. So you either optimize your code, or you offload the CPU intensive or blocking code to another process. And from the inside, option one is don't do this. Like, ew, what, what are you doing? We don't want to run synchronously this many operations in a row, because the call stack is going to be blocked. Don't check for a condition with a while loop, because uh, uh, no. And please, if you're using the file system library or the crypto library, for example, in this, we're reading a one gigabyte file from in a synchronous way. It's like, uh, what? <laughs> we'll need to refactor. <laughs> we just don't do that here in Node.js because it will block the event loop and it will prevent us from running our app like it's supposed to in the event-driven way. So we can do better, but how can we do better? in Node.js. We can divide the huge amounts of work, such as a huge array that you want to process, uh, using uh, apps, uh, libraries such as async. Async lets you uh, process a huge array by the thousand or, or by the hundreds. And if you um, defer each, um, how can I tell this? If you defer, uh, the process of blocks, like by hundred, to the next band loop, it will just block it for the hundred, it, and it can be you can you can uh, config configure it uh, to be a thousand if your app is super fast or if it's just a tiny operation, and you can process a millions of records of an array in a 
um, by blocks way without blocking the band loop. We can use the streams, which will also have the benefit of a memory saving in a huge way. Uh, you need to use the event-driven design of Node.js instead of polling for a condition with a while loop. You can execute promises in a parallel way when it's possible, because not uh, if you depend like a waterfall uh, kind of thing, you can do it. But if you can execute them in parallel, please do, using promise.all and await them all at the same time. In Node.js, instead of process.nextic, which defers that function to the end of the current phase, you set immediate to make sure that the event loop is not blocked. Also applies to set timeout. Instead of using set timeout uh, zero, if you are, you set immediate. Because set timeout is not always going to be set timeout with zero in our case. Sometimes it's going to be timed out at after one millisecond. But if you're doing one millisecond a million times, it's going to add up. And option two, offloading. How can we offload, offload things in Node.js? So currently, we have the old uh, save way, which is child processes. It's a full process, uh, system process. It's a, it has a stable API. It has been around since node 0.10. And it's super old and safe. We can all count with it. We can run any type of process. And then we have worker threads. So worker threads uh, are still experimental, but they are amazing. Uh, they are no, no longer behind the flag in Node 12, in fact, from 11.7. They can share memory with the parent process through array buffers. And they are new and shiny, which is amazing. And so let's, let's take an example of what a child process looks like. And when you require the API and you fork, so forking is just calling node, a node process with this script. Uh, if we receive a message from that child process, we're, it's a message from child, and we're going to send that, that child process a hello world object. And on the child, if we listen a message, we'll print it out, and we have a counter starting at zero, and we'll just send the process. And it's like magic. It's <laughs> but we want more magic, right? It's, uh, this, this, this type of thing, uh, you can do it on your own, but it's completely manual work. We want more magic. So that's why I built super require. So super require is like require with magic. It's super easy. It's, it's, it's stupid to use. So it's super easy to get started. It's npm install sr. It's like that's a... Uh, six keys and two spaces. And if you were requiring an awesome module, then you just can do require with SR. That's simple. And now everything is uploaded to a secondary child process. But if you are using local modules, which are not in your package.json, you will have to resolve the exact uh, location of that module. And how does this work? How is this uh, magic possible? This magic is because of this. In our main app, we have the SR module, which will proxy all the function calls of, this, of that module. If we call it or, or if we are awaiting for our result, it will pass it to a child process where the module can do whatever it wants and then return the result, and voila, magic. So let me show you a quick demo. So we had the block the script, which ran the blocking function with a uh, we require we, we required it here, but now we're gonna require it. 
with super require. And we're going to resolve uh, the file and just require it with that. We're, we still have the interval of highs every second. We still have the block that uh, callback to let us know if it's blocked. And we set timeout of that f blocking function in the three second mark. So what happens when we execute it? We have the high, 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 high. And we continue to receive our highs because it's not blocked at all. And then it's done. There's no blockage. Everything is working as it's supposed to. So let's go back to our presentation. The ant is near. This is a spoiler. But if you need it on the browser, again, there is already a module for that. And it's called Workerize uh, by the creator of Preact. You can find it in this address. And thank you. <laughs>